massive Bolivian earthquake reveals mountains 660 kilometers under our feet. This is by Princeton University Research on Science Daily, February 14. Seismologists found mountains and smooth plains on a boundary layer deep within the Earth's mantle. Geophysicists used data from an enormous earthquake in Bolivia, and they found mountains at the base of the mantle's transition zone. They're located 660 kilometers below our feet. Their statistical model did not allow for precise height measurements, but these mountains may be bigger than anything on the surface of the Earth. The researchers also examined the top of the transition zone 410 kilometers down and did not find similar roughness. Graphic showing the transition zone inside the Earth, Princeton seismologist Jessica Irving worked with then graduate student Wembo Wu and another collaborator to determine the roughness on the top and bottom of the transition zone, a layer within the mantle used scattering using scattered earthquakes, earthquake waves. They found the top of the transition zone, a layer located 410 kilometers down, is mostly smooth. But the base of the transition zone, 660 kilometers down, in some places is much rougher than the global surface average. In other words, stronger topography than the Rocky Mountains or the Appalachians is present at the 660 kilometer boundary. This is what Wu noted. This graphic, of course, is not to scale. Credit to Kyle McKernan, Office of Communications. Most school children learn that the Earth has three or four layers, a crust, mantle, and core, which is sometimes subdivided into inner and outer core, and that's not wrong, but it does leave out several other layers that scientists have identified within the Earth. In a study published this week in Science, Princeton geophysicists Jessica Irving and Wenbo Wu, in collaboration with Saidia Sadaini from the Institute of Geodesy and Geophysics in China, used data from an enormous earthquake in Bolivia to find mountains and other topography on a layer located 660 kilometers, that's 410 miles, straight down, which separates the upper and lower mantle. Lacking a formal name for this layer, the researchers simply called it the 660-kilometer boundary. To peer deep into the Earth, scientists use the most powerful waves on the planet, which are generated by massive earthquakes. Quote, you want a big, deep earthquake to get the whole planet to shake, end quote, said Irving, an assistant professor of geosciences. Well, we remember we had such a thing on 11-11, uh, November 11th. We had that earthquake that was all around the world, and it lasted like about a minute. Nobody knows where what happened. Uh, some, some geologists say that it could have been a massive magma chamber that had its roof collapsing, and it made the, the world ring like a bell for a minute, a minute. I even felt that, and it was nighttime here in Athens, Greece, and it was going on forever. Uh, now, the big earthquakes are vastly more powerful than small ones, they say here. Energy increases 30-fold with every step up the Richter scale, the magnitude scale. And deep earthquakes, instead of frittering away their energy in the crust, can get the whole mantle going. There you go. Well, maybe that's what happened November 11th with that worldwide earthquake. Irving said she gets her best data from earthquakes that are seven magnitude or higher. She said she, as the earth uh, shockwaves they, they send out in all directions, can travel through the core to the other side of the planet and back again. For this study, the key data came from waves picked up after a magnitude 8.2 earthquake, the second largest deep earthquake ever recorded, that shook Bolivia in 1994. Quote, earthquakes this big don't come along very often, she said. We're lucky now that we have so many more seismometers than we did even 20 years ago. Seismology is a different field than it was 20 years ago between instruments and computational resources. Seismologists and data scientists use powerful computers, including Princeton's Tiger supercomputer cluster, to simulate the complicated behavior of scattered waves in the deep earth. 
The technology depends on a fundamental property of waves, their ability to bend and bounce, just as light waves can bounce and reflect off a mirror or bend and refract when passing through a prism. Earthquake waves travel straight through homogeneous rocks, but they reflect or refract when they encounter any boundary or roughness. We know that almost all objects have surface roughness, and therefore they scatter light, said Wu, the lead author of the new paper, who just completed his geoscience PhD and is now a postdoctorate researcher at the California Institute of Technology. Quote, that's why we can see these objects. The scattering waves carry the information about the surface's roughness. In this study, we investigated scattered seismic waves traveling inside the Earth to constrain the roughness of the Earth's 660 kilometer boundary, end quote. The researchers were surprised by just how rough that boundary is, rougher than the surface layer that we all live on. Quote, in other words, stronger topography than the Rocky Mountains or the Appalachians is present at the 660 kilometer boundary, end quote, said Wu. Their statistical model did not allow for precise height determinations, but there's a chance that these mountains are bigger than anything on the surface of the Earth. The roughness wasn't equally distributed, either. Just as the crust surface has smooth ocean floors and massive mountains, the 660-kilometer boundary has rough areas and smooth patches. The researchers also examined a layer 410 kilometers, that's 225 miles down, at the top of the mid-mantle transition zone, and they did not find similar roughness. Quote, they find that Earth's deep layers are just as complicated as what we observe at the surface, end quote, says seismologist Christine Hauser, an assistant professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, who was not involved in the research. Quote, to find two miles, that's one to three kilometer elevation changes on a boundary that is over 400 miles at 660 kilometers deep, using waves that travel through the entire Earth and back is an inspiring feat. Their findings suggest that as earthquakes occur and seismic instruments become more sophisticated and expand into new areas, we will continue to detect new small-scale signals which reveal new properties of Earth's layers. And what does this all mean? The presence of roughness on the 660-kilometer boundary has significant implications for understanding how our planet formed and continues to function. That layer divides the mantle, which makes up about 84% of the Earth's volume. That's a lot. The mantle is 84% of the Earth's volume into its upper and lower sections. For years, geoscientists have debated just how important that boundary is. In particular, they have investigated how heat travels through the mantle, whether hot rocks are carried smoothly from one core mantle boundary almost 2,000 miles down, all the way up to the top of the mantle, or whether that transfer is interpreted at, interrupted at this layer. Some geochemical and mineralogical evidence suggests that the upper and lower mantle are chemically different, which supports the idea that the two sections don't mix thermally or physically. Other observations suggest no chemical difference between the upper and lower mantle, leading some to argue that was called a well-mixed mantle with both the upper and lower mantle participating in the same heat transfer cycle. Quote, our findings provide insight into this question, unquote, Wu said. The data suggests that both groups might be partially right. The smoother areas of the 660-kilometer boundary could result from more thorough vertical mixing, while the rougher mountainous areas may have formed where the upper and lower mantle don't mix as well. In addition, the roughness the researchers found, which existed at large, moderate, and small scales, could theoretically be caused by heat anomalies or chemical heterogeneities. heterogeneities. But because of how heat is transported within the mantle, we explained any small-scale thermal anomaly would be smoothed out within a million years. That leaves only chemical differences to explain the small-scale roughness they found. What could cause significant chemical differences? The introduction of rocks that used to belong to the crust, 
now resting quietly in the mantle. He was talking about subduction zones. Scientists have long debated the fate of the slabs of seafloor that get pushed into the mantle at subduction zones. The collisions happening found all around the Pacific Ocean and elsewhere around the world. Wu and Irving suggest that remnants of these slabs may now be just above or just below the 660 kilometer boundary. Quote, it's easy to assume, given we can only detect seismic waves traveling through the Earth in its current state, that seismologists cannot help understand how Earth's interior has changed over the past four and a half billion years, Irving said. What's exciting about these results is that they give us new information to understand the fate of ancient tectonic plates which have descended into the mantle and where ancient mantle material might still reside. And she added, seismology is most exciting when it lets us better understand our planet's interior in both space and time. This is from materials provided by Princeton University, original written by Liz Fuller Wright. And uh, this is a journal reference, Wembo Wu, Sidao Ni, and Jessica Irving, inferring Earth's discontinuous chemical layer from the 660 kilometer boundary topography, Science 2019. So that's wonderful. It's from Princeton University. Massive Bolivian earthquake reveals mountains 660 kilometers below our feet. Seismologists found mountains and smooth plains on a boundary layer between the Earth's mantle. This is Science Daily, February 14, 2019. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.